Since the beginning of time, humans have wondered about what the universe is made of and wanted to investigate and understand it. Today, we still only know about 4% of the cosmos, and almost everything we have learned so far, we have learned through electromagnetic radiation, through light. The particles and gamma rays are given enormous energies by cosmic particle accelerators. The form of light with the highest energy is called gamma rays. Gamma rays come to us straight from high-energy processes in exploding stars or ultra-compact objects like neutron stars or black holes. Gamma rays are unable to pass through the Earth's atmosphere, but scientists are still able to detect them by taking advantage of a unique technique. They use telescopes to observe the cascades of secondary particles which are produced when gamma rays hit the atmosphere. The cascade particles create the so-called Cherenkov light. From the cascade's energy and direction, the scientists can then find the source of the gamma rays. About a hundred years ago, Victor Hess discovered cosmic radiation with his balloon experiments. The mystery of their sources has not yet been solved completely. In the 1930s, Pavel Cherenkov discovered the effect which is now used to observe atmospheric showers. But astronomy with gamma rays was first achieved by Trevor Weeks and his group. Die Leute haben 30 Jahre in den Himmel gestarrt und es gab viele Theoretiker, viele Physiker, die sie für verrückt erklärt haben. Man hat gesagt, es kann gar nicht sein, dass, dass es Sterne gibt, dass es, dass es Objekte gibt, die Licht bei diesen sehr, sehr hohen Energien ähm, ausstrahlen. Und, und sie haben das Gegenteil bewiesen. All the ingredients needed to detect these extremely short bursts of Cherenkov light generated by particle cascades in the atmosphere were already available in 1948. 20 years later, Trevor Weeks built the Whipple telescope. But it took until 1989 for him to detect the first source of gamma rays in the Crab Nebula. The method was proven. HEGRA was the start of the European efforts for detecting cascades with multiple telescopes, which were also continually improved in sensitivity. After HESS was commissioned, initially with four telescopes, scientists were also able to show that some gamma ray sources are extended and cover the size of the full moon. Today, astroparticle physicists can study over 150 sources. Many of these had never been seen before in other wave bands, and some sources are still unidentified. Hess and its sister experiments Veritas and Magic were able to improve the methods for detecting gamma rays with Cherenkov light. This technology is now well understood. Und ich denke, mit CTA werden wir dann wirklich Tausende von diesen Quellen sehen und eigentlich sehen, dass das, dass das Universum ein, ein hochenergetisches Leben hat. CTA steht für Cherenkov Telescope Array. CTA ist also primär ein Instrument, um ganz hochenergetische Gammastrahlung aus dem Kosmos mit einer sehr hohen Empfindlichkeit nachzuweisen. Around 100 telescopes of different sizes will view the entire sky. The plan is to build around 20 telescopes in the northern hemisphere and 70 to 100 telescopes on around 10 square kilometers in the southern hemisphere. There are many challenges. Um, the, the main one, I think, is, is just the sheer scale of the undertaking. So if, if, we, if we build something like 100 telescopes, uh, we should make sure they're extremely efficient and, and reliable uh, detectors, uh, as well as working hard to make sure that we get you know, the best value for money, essentially. So for me, this is the main challenge, to make the whole thing um, realizable on the, on the time scale we want and to make it uh, reliable. The CTA team consists of 1,100 experts from 28 countries, a truly global consortium. The largest individual group in this international project is from DAISY. The German federal government supports CTA as one of the most important scientific projects of the coming years. DAISY is responsible for the design and construction of the medium-sized telescopes with a mirror of 12 meters diameter and has a leading role in the development of the telescope control. The logistical challenge is huge. New telescopes have to be designed and optimized, considering simultaneously scientific, economic and mass production aspects. Es ist eine sehr junge Forschungstechnologie, auch ein sehr junges Forschungsgebiet, wo man aber, um dieses Forschungsgebiet durchzuführen, einfach 
Großgeräte braucht, die eben zum einen natürlich den Background brauchen, äh, braucht, um so Großgeräte überhaupt ins Leben zu rufen, aber auch die Großgeräte dann vernünftig zu betreiben. Und das ist im Wesentlichen eines der Spezialitäten von DESI, Großgeräte äh, so zu betreiben, dass sie dann auch den vernünftigen wissenschaftlichen Output produzieren. Gerade für uns, für DESI am Standort Zeuthen, die wir ja so ein, ein Zentrum für Astroteilchenphysik sind und darunter fällt die Gamma-Astronomie, ist es eigentlich sehr wichtig, das Zukunftsprojekt für uns. Das ist also wirklich das, was wir wissenschaftlich machen wollen in den nächsten 10 bis 20 Jahren, hängt halt von CTA auch entscheidend ab. DESI is able to rely on its in-house teams of engineers and technicians to support the scientists. The medium-sized telescope is a completely new design and nothing is left to chance. Feasibility studies go hand in hand with continuous evaluation and testing of components. The main emphasis is on the electric motors which are needed to drive the huge telescopes quickly and accurately and the mirrors needed to capture the faint flashes of Terenkov light. This expertise is applied to the development of the whole array. Scientists calculate all possible configurations of the telescopes to find the optimal one for reliably detecting the gamma ray sources and recording precisely their energy and arrival direction. CTA wird ein Instrument sein, das sehr viele, sehr verschiedene Physikfragen beantworten kann. Wir haben Milliarden von Luftschauern erzeugt, voll durchsimuliert und simulieren dann wirklich, wie das Schreckhofflicht auf die Teleskope fällt, auf den Spiegel reflektiert wird, in der Kamera gemessen wird und dann eben auch das elektronische Signal. Und das ist das, was wir dann rausschreiben und analysieren. Also das ist wirklich eine möglichst realistische Simulation von wie so ein Teleskop nachher einen Schauer oder die ganzen Schauer messen wird. To learn all about the production processes and the materials involved in the project and to reduce the costs of producing the final array, Daisy has built a prototype for the medium-sized telescope. The engineers worked with local steel building contractors to find out if specialist companies are needed or if the telescopes can be constructed quickly, dependably and with the required precision by combining Daisy expertise with local know-how. The answer is Yes, they can. Even better than expected. Man kann sich nicht mehr Zeit lassen, weil wir äh, sozusagen an, das, an die anderen Messprogramme anknüpfen wollen. Wir müssen jetzt viele Quellen messen, weil wir in einem, das ist sozusagen ein goldenes Zeitalter der Astronomie im Moment. Alles das, was wir gelernt haben in, in der Zeit der von Hess und Magic und Veritas kann man jetzt umsetzen äh, in CTA. Typischerweise ist es so, dass in unserem Gebiet man keine Lücken lassen kann, weil dir weil die einfach das Wissen zerfällt. Jetzt haben wir alle Leute an Bord, die die Erfahrung haben, Sachen zu bauen, aber auch Sachen zu betreiben und die Physik zu machen. Und das ist der nächste logische Schritt. Man kann das jetzt nicht noch zehn Jahre messen und man misst dann zehn mehr, mehr Quellen. Man muss wirklich einen nächsten neuen Schritt machen und das ist CTA. 2013 saw the construction of a one-of-a-kind version of the medium-sized telescope in Berlin Adlershof. Around 40 telescopes of this type will be built for CTA. The prototype has remarkable dimensions. It is 35 meters high and consists of 75 tons of steel. The distance from the camera to the center of the mirror is 16 meters and the camera weighs about two tons. Obviously, forces on the support elements are huge. has a diameter of about 12 meters. The 100 square meters of mirror act like a sail or a parachute in the wind. Still, the telescope is designed to keep pointing in the right direction in winds gusting up to 35 kilometers per hour. 
The telescope was built to be powerful yet precise. It needs the precision to be able to track a source across the sky or to slew to the position of a gamma ray burst in less than 90 seconds. The mirrors are supplied by institutes in Poland, Italy and France. They too have to survive the field test. They are especially sensitive to environmental conditions. Changes in temperature, blowing sand and moisture will reduce their efficiency and thus influence the lifetime of the whole telescopes. The prototype meets all the expectations. With a working camera, it could actually be used for gamma-ray observations if it was located in a dark, clear desert region and not in Berlin. Daisy has done its homework. But what will the complete array with 70 to 100 telescopes be capable of? I personally would like to see dark matter with CT. That if we see dark matter with CT, that would be probably the most important discovery in this century. Gamma Strahlen sind eigentlich ein einzigartiger Botschafter. So das ist ja das Aufregende an der Sache. Das ist allgemein das Aufregende an Astronomie. Astronomie. Immer wenn man ein neues Teleskop anschaltet, sieht man Dinge, die man nicht erwartet hat. We think we give ourselves the best chance to discover the unexpected effectively. So whilst we have an eye on all these sort of known questions, yeah, we don't know the answers, but in some cases we know the questions. Uh, one of the most exciting things about the array is by expanding our knowledge of, of the universe over a very wide energy range, we think there's real potential to discover uh, the completely new.